Which is where? If you go to participants and then hover over my name, click more, and then it should say make co-host. Just make host and make a new host. Okay. Perfect. Okay, one second. Oh yeah, it doesn't allow co-host on yours. Okay, no problem. Well, we'll just run with it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so thank you all. Um, we're excited that you're here. I'm excited for 2024 as well. You know, sometimes it's not easy to be excited um, just with either, you know, how business is going or maybe holidays for you or maybe, um, you know, just the the sentiment of 2023 hasn't been the best. And so we are excited to help you determine a plan that works for you. One, one issue that I see in a lot of business planning sessions is that people are, they are, they kind of give you one way to do something. And then you feel like if that's not your idea of business planning, then all of the sudden what happens? You you don't you never look at that plan again, right? It's just it doesn't fit you. So we're gonna talk today about how to make the plan yours and something that you're gonna want to look at throughout the year so you can make your own dreams and goals happen. So let's get right into it. Um, I'm gonna share my screen here. There we go. All right, perfect. You can see my screen, right? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so like I mentioned, I'm super excited to spend this time with you today. Um, I'm excited that you guys are here. I'm excited that we get to do this together. Hold on a second. Sorry. I do this all the time. We were just talking about this this morning. I have to change my view here. I got to move this over. Sorry. Okay, there we go. You can still see it. Okay, perfect. We're good then. All right. <laughs> Sorry. So I live in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, so far from Memphis, Tennessee, if all of you are in that type of area. I know we have some people from other areas, but I've been a realtor for 20 years um, been part of over 2,000 homes sold. Um, I was a co-agent, uh, co-owner of two different real estate teams, and I sold my last real estate team for a seven-figure valuation. We went from zero to 300 sales in five years. And what I found doing that is while that was great and it was exciting and very nerve-wracking at the time, um, I really had this passion for helping other agents grow and other businesses grow, not just one. And so the last 10 years I've spent coaching agents, um, helping them with teams and creating systems and automation and um, processes so that they, they can leverage growth and everything doesn't have to be so hard, right? Sometimes real estate feels like the hardest career and it just doesn't have to be. So um, that's one of the things I love is creating all those different types of systems and automation. So I know what you might be thinking. I've done this before. Why would this plan work? I think these same things when I, when I get on webinars, right? How is this different than the hundreds of other business planning everybody else is like giving to me? I already know what I need to do. I just got to do it. I don't even know how I could fit anything else in my schedule. I'm already overwhelmed. And it is completely normal to be thinking one or all of those because maybe you consume a lot of trainings. Maybe you um, just want some direction, but you're like, who do I trust? One person says they'd have done this. One person says they've done this. And I get it. I, I have 100% been there too. And there's one difference. And the difference is you. It's either taking action or not. And I like to call this the driven versus the drifters. So you know that feeling where you kind of get this like idea or this message and you kind of feel like you're called to just do more. It's kind of that one thing in your gut. It just keeps like coming up for you. It keeps nagging at you. Well, here's what happens when we get that calling. First, you're excited. You're like, woo, this like seems fun and new and exciting and intriguing. And maybe it aligns with what you want. 
But then the second you get excited about it, resistance sets in. You're, you got family going on, crazy things, work hits the fan, all of a sudden like you get anxiety and the doubt creeps in. And then you're worried about it. Risks start to pop up, right? And then maybe that passes and you kind of get another whisper and you're like, gosh, that thing came up again. Like I should really do that in my business or my life or, and you kind of start thinking, you know, maybe that is what I'm supposed to do, but I don't know. And then you start researching, right? You're like Googling, like, how do I do this? How do I make this my career? How does this happen? Right. And, and what happens is, All of a sudden, as you're busy Googling and researching and thinking and deciding, somebody else took action and got the results you wanted. And you had that idea first. Has that ever happened to you? Where all of a sudden on Instagram, you're like, dude, I was going to do that. What? Oh, they must be listening to me. My Alexa is telling everybody everything. This is what Driven versus the Drifter is all about. The Driven are not 100% sure. There's always risks. There's always failures. They're second guessing themselves, but they keep going. They keep answering that calling, that thing in their gut. They know they need to do this for their business. They know they need to do this in their life to have fulfillment and joy. And they know that if they answer that calling, everything will change. It won't be a perfect ride. It's going to be super bumpy, but they keep going. The drifters They give in, they give into that risk and that nagging and that scared and what will people think? And it's not proven. I can't do it. I'm just going to do stuff how I always do it. I'm going to let my day get away from me. And every time their ideas do come to fruition, but it's by someone else. And every time that happens, a little bit of self-confidence is chipped away. And so it's hard to be motivated. So if you're feeling right now like, man, it's just, I want to be motivated, but it's hard. It's okay. You're still in the right place. It just means we got to take a little more action and not worry so much and get caught up in that overwhelm and analysis paralysis so that those whispers don't quit coming to us. We want them to come to us so we know our next path. So I know you're here to make a decision and take action. So don't let resistance Set in as you're making these plans today. If you feel a little bit nervous, a little bit itchy, a little bit <laughs> unsure, you're probably writing down the right things, right? They should make you a little scared, a little nervous, not crazy, right? You still have to commit to them. But what we want to do is find the plan that works for you so you can stay 100% driven. You are one decision away from a better business and you can answer that calling. All right. Second part, we're going to talk about what's our roadmap to success. So I know you want to create this business that offers you more time, right? You guys want to make money. We want to have leverage. But most business owners aren't actual owners. We're really just self-employed. So in order to be a true business owner, there has to be the things I've been talking about, like the automations and the systems and the processes and businesses that are scalable and saleable and sustainable have more worth than what you do just yourself. So we want to make sure that you've got a business that starts to run like a well-oiled machine. That's what we want to create. And here's how we're going to do it. Here's our roadmap. So first, we're going to set the stage. We're going to, the first part of today, we're going to talk about acknowledging and celebrating the things we've achieved over the past 12 months. That's one of the hardest things to do. Because we're so busy moving forward, we forget to look back. So we want to slow down, see the wins. Second, we're going to remove obstacles in our way. So everybody has a full plate. We're going to remove the unnecessary today so that everything else becomes easier so we can accomplish it. Then we're going to go through the five models. There's five models in your business that has to be thought out and planned so that you have a well-rounded plan. And we want to make sure it's timely and achievable. And then lastly, we're going to put it all together. And this is going to be your dashboard. It's going to hold your vision, your plan, your goals for your business. This is what you're going to revisit, revise, and reevaluate every single quarter so you know you're on the right track. No longer do you have to do this full-on business plan every quarter. You're going to have the plan here, and you're going to take pieces of it to complete every 90 days. So it's going to be great. All right. If you don't have your workbook, now is the time to get it out. 
we are going to start with vision and maybe Melissa, can you repost that link that I posted in case they came late? Sure. Um, and if you have questions, you can go ahead and type them in the chat. I'll answer them um, either at the end or if it's relevant for that time, then we'll go ahead and answer them. Then Melissa, you'll have to let me know. I'm not watching the chat. So creating the highest, grandest vision possible for your life because you become what you believe. That's a quote from Oprah Winfrey. So we're going to start with our vision. If you don't have a booklet, it's okay. You can write these things down. No big deal. So we're going to start with looking back. So everybody, I'd love you to write down the five accomplishments from this last year. Five accomplishments. I would like you to, con we're just going to continue on the path of business. If you were doing this um, at a different time, I'd add in five personal as well. But just for the sake of time and for our business planning, let's write down five accomplishments of the last year. And if you want to share them in the chat, that's amazing. If you don't want to, no problem. So the five accomplishments of this last year. They don't have to be big either. Sometimes we think, well, I didn't really do anything great. If you got an offer accepted in the last four months, a buyer, Good job. That put that sucker down. <laughs> Sometimes it's challenging. The second part to this, and go ahead and continue writing, is what challenges came up for you? Maybe it was mindset, maybe it was um, getting people approved, maybe it was getting your buyers off the fence, maybe it was getting sellers to be realistic because they don't realize that the market's changed a bit. What were those challenges? Maybe it's that you um, feel like you're reinventing the wheel every time you do something. Like if someone called you today and said, come over and list my house. Do you have your presentation ready, your packet ready? Could you do a CMA before you get there and have it ready, the paperwork all printed? Like, do you have a system like that? Maybe that's a challenge. Maybe it's not. And then lastly, what lessons did you learn? So you've got your accomplishments, you've got your challenges, and what lessons did you learn? Maybe it's around the accomplishments. You want more joy in your life. You need to spend more time off work than on. Maybe you need to spend more time working on and in your business. Maybe it's that you're very reactive. Your year isn't planned out. So by the end of the year, you're like, did I even take a vacation? Like, what did we do this year? Where'd all my money go? All right, we're gonna go to the second part. So now that we've kind of looked back, we're going to assess our business. So if you open up your booklet, there is a assessment page um, and there are questions around attracting business to you, converting that business and delivering that business, and then ultimately being able to scale. So if we look at, let's see if I can, oh, I can't make that bigger. Um, I'll read you the questions in case you don't have the booklet and then you can answer them. So let me open it quick. All right, so you're gonna rate yourself on a scale from one to five. I always tell people three is not an answer. 
because it's kind of like, eh, I don't know. So if you don't know and you're wanting to give it a three, give it either a two because it's it's not really getting better or a four because it's pretty good. So we're going to say no threes. I should just take it out. So it's a one, two, four, or five, rate yourself. And the first question is, you have a system for your past clients and sphere that consistently generates inbound referrals. Number two, you have a system for generating listing opportunities outside of your database. Number three, you have a system for generating buyer opportunities outside of your database. You have a system in place for managing and converting leads that are followed by all. So if you have an admin or a buyer agent or an agent on your team, it's followed by everybody. Or if you don't have anybody, it's followed by you. You use proven scripts and have a consistent process for setting new appointments. So it's the same way every time you follow these steps. You use the same sales process and materials when meeting with prospective clients. Same presentation, same packet. You've got like the same five things you show up with every single time. You deliver consistent high-level service to your active buyer and seller clients. So they're currently working with you. They are active. Same level of high-level service. You deliver consistent high-level service to everybody under contract. So there's a process while they're under contract. They get these emails, these indications, this messages, these calls. You use technology at a high level in your business, but you don't get distracted by squirrels. So the newest best thing. That one's tough for me. You have a clear three-year plan and know the best way to achieve that goal. You take monthly breaks to delegate tasks that aren't serving you and your business at the highest level. You consistently crush your quarterly rocks by fulfilling weekly commitments and filling out a daily top three. So the top three things you know moves your business forward for that day. You're following an economic model that allows you to build a truly sustainable business. So economic model means you understand the splits you're paying, you understand what you're paying in your brokerage, you understand what a listing costs you, um, those types of things. You're profitable, you're not spending too much. You know and track the key leading and lagging indicators in your business and review them regularly. You track your net worth and make moves to increase it. You have a documented, effective recruiting plan that consistently generates prospects. Now, this could be also clients, right? So if you're not actively looking for agents to join you, it could be um, like um, sellers and buyers. You have a documented onboarding and training plan that gets hires to perform at their highest level. You have a clear weekly and daily cadence and a team and thriving culture of productivity, even if that's just you. So what you'll find as you're doing this assessment is that, well, hopefully you don't feel bad, right? Sometimes people feel bad. They're like, oh my gosh, my numbers are like one and two. Well, you're probably being hard on yourself, right? Nobody's business is perfect. Even a saleable business. When I sold my business, not everything was perfect, right? There was, there was still lots of problems, but now you know what a successful business has in place. And so if you're missing some things, you're going to look at those ones and twos and you're going to decide, hey, these are areas that I want to improve. And you probably can't improve all of them in one year, right? So this is just sort of your, you know, people say like, give me a list. What are things I need to implement in my business? This is your list. These are the things that need to go into your business. So what? could it look like? You need a purpose, not just a job to do, right? Sometimes that's why we get burnt out in real estate. We forget our purpose. We, for, we don't feel fulfilled anymore. It feels just like this job instead of like, hey, I thought it was a business owner. So imagine you could create your dream real estate business. What does that look like? What does your environment look like? 
Do you have staff? How often do you work? How much vacation do you take? Who do you need to be more present with? What roles do you fill? The more details, the better. Now, this can be hard. For some people, it's hard to dream what it could look like because it feels so unreachable. But this is where you get to write it on paper. I want six weeks of vacation. I want two administrative assistants, one that handles all marketing and social media, one that handles contract close and does my CMAs for me. Maybe even calls my clients. I want an office that has windows everywhere, whatever that might be. I want to dress like Melissa Thompson, so I need someone to style me. So it's creating that big picture for yourself. All right. I know I'm not giving you much time, but it is going to take time for you to reflect on these. So I want to keep moving. Next, we're going to get into delegation. Your time is limited. So don't waste it living someone else's life. Steve Jobs. I love that. So we're going to talk about something. Melissa and I love to do this. And Melissa, I'd love for you to kind of pop in here. Um, talking about delegate, elevate. So mm -hmm. I know you do this as well. Um, do you want to kind of talk about why you do Delegate Elevate and kind of what it's done for you? This one's written a little bit different, so I know, but how you use Delegate Elevate. Sure. Okay. And Sunshine is texting me. She said she's in the oh. waiting room. I don't know if you can see oh. it. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. So just starting out, what you realize is like, do you really need to be putting the key box on? Do you really need to be putting the sign up? So um, when I joined Stacy at Real Estate B School, when I started coaching with them, it really, we do a two week time study. And so you kind of go through what, you know, what's your highest dollar producing activity? Well, guess what? It's not putting signs up. And when I started in the business, that's how I'm like, well, this is what I do. This is part of the job, you know, kind of thing. But when you take a step back and it's like, what can you hire to be done? And sometimes we get caught up thinking it has to be um, like a full-time employee. It doesn't. So it's like you can hire somebody part-time to do the signs. My photographer actually right now does my signs. So when I'm hiring, he do the photos. He does the photos, the signs, and the key box. I don't do all any of that. Now, yes, I have a key box in my, you know, car, but I haven't done a sign y'all in years. So just some little things that, you know, I shouldn't be jumping up and down in my dress clothes to put a sign in the yard, you know, especially in our heat. You can't even get, get it in the ground. Y'all know what I'm talking about, but... And those are just few things that I started out. And then when you realize that you don't have to do everything, you know, just doing the business for so long before I started doing a better job at this, I'm like, I don't have to be the person that calls them every week to update them. I don't have to give them the feedback about each showing that they had. So you start having an ad man do these jobs. Um, and it just really lets you do what you love to do best and what's your highest dollar, you know, producing activity. So there's a few of the ways that I started, you know, kind of implementing and kind of open up your eyes to what that can look like. Yeah, I love that. And I love the specifics that you gave, right? What are the things you're doing that you don't need to? So this, we, like Melissa said, we do this two week time study. And sometimes what happens is you forget over the two weeks. You're like, oh my gosh, I don't remember what I did 15 minutes ago on Tuesday because I didn't write it down. So we kind of came up with this new easy one. And you just take a piece of paper like this top half here where it says $20 an hour and $200 an hour. And so what you do is you actually write, you keep this piece of paper with you and you write down during the day, anything you do that's $20 or less an hour, you'd pay someone to do that. And then you also on the right-hand side, write down anything that you would do at $200 an hour or more. So let me give you an example, listing presentations. $200 an hour or more, right? You can't just hire someone off the street and boom, they can go do your listing presentation. Um, you know, things like reaching out to prospects, asking for referrals. Those are higher dollar per hour things. Somebody that you could hire just to come into your business and do are $20 an hour things. Make a flyer, 
um, drop those flyers off, measure a house. Um, like Melissa said, a photographer, right? That's less than $200 an hour. Um, or, you know, someone else is much more skilled at it, right? So that goes there. So this, I love this document. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I do it all the time. There's probably like eight pieces of paper around here with that on it because I just love seeing it. So we want to know like what is taking up our time when you feel like you're in a holding pattern and there's so much to do, you kind of can't break out of it. This is where this really works. And so when you do this, you can do it on any piece of paper, right? The 20 and $200, you want to know what am I doing? Like you can look, sometimes I'll look at my days and there are so many $20 activities on there. I'm like embarrassed. I know better and I still do it. So you're going to do it, but it helps you know. So then later, like Melissa said, who can we delegate it to? So after you look at your $200 pile, this determines your zone of genius. Your zone of genius is where you thrive. This is what you love to do and you're absolutely great at it. So it's like those pieces of the job that you just love and you love doing, you don't even think about it. Like for me, I like if everyone, of, if I lived in your town and you guys said, Hey, come over and like create these systems for me. I'd be like, poof, done over there in a minute. Like I just love doing that. And to some people it's like, I don't even know how to do that. Right. That's my zone of genius, creating automations, figuring out systems, solving complex problems. Those are things for me, that's a zone of genius. It lights you up, right? Then you're going to look at your $20 an hour items and you're going to start to think who. So that's below the 20, who, who could do these? Maybe it's not today, but over time, like Melissa said, the things her photographer does. I had my photographer measure for me. We had our sign guy, like Melissa said, does things for her our sign guy also dropped off lock boxes so it's it's just asking them and did I have to pay him a little bit more yeah but the time it takes me to drive somewhere and do it is you know triple that amount so it could also be a software you need or an automation you need to create so it's not always like a person who and then lastly when you're looking at your how so that's your $200 an hour items. How can I make more time here? How can I accomplish these things more often? Because this is the part of my job that I love. Those are some of the plans that you're working on as well for your year, right? How do I do more of this in my life? How do I make time for more of this? So you want to make sure that that's what you're using. If you use nothing else from this business plan, use this piece of paper. This To me, this is like, you could not have a plan and work off of this all year and you will be good because you'll be learning what you need to do more of and what makes you money in your business. <laughs> okay, for those numbers people, we're gonna talk numbers now. Um, some of you are numbers people, some of you aren't. It's okay, we're gonna do it in an easy way so you know where you're at. So in order to see where you're going, we have to not only remember where we've been, but we have to understand where we've been. And that's what numbers do for us. So in this part of the booklet, and again, if you don't have the booklet, you can write this stuff down, but we're gonna reverse engineer what we need to make in order to take home what we want. So if you figure out what you wanna make, and you figure out how much taxes you need to withhold. So generally 25% is, is a good number, right? And then figure out how much expenses are in your business, which again, easy number, 30%. Some of you, it won't be that high. Some of you, if it's higher than that, you know to get it down to 30%. And once you take those numbers along with your average commission price, you're going to know exactly how many transactions you need to close to make the money you want to make. And so this exercise I love doing because it's just so easy. So if I know I want to make, you know, based on my sales price, if I want to make $500,000, I've got to sell 58 homes. Okay. Cause I know what my expenses are, what I pay my brokerage. I know what it, 
you know, generally I use the 30% too, right? Cause it covers my brokerage costs. It covers my advertising, covers my software, things I use and, and all those types of things. And then adding taxes onto it. I know that in order to do that, I've got to sell X amount of homes. And so instead of a lot of times, what we'll do is we'll say, I want to make 500,000. Okay. I got to sell, you know, whatever, six, 42 homes to do that, but you're not taking into account. We got to make more, right? Sam likes to take some of that money. So this is a great exercise just to understand those initial numbers. I want to spend a little time on this document. Sometimes this is hard because you haven't tracked before. So what I want to do is encourage you to start tracking some things such as, um, Things like how many listing appointments have you been on this year? An easy way to do it for me is in my calendar, right? So you should look in your calendar and you probably have it listed like appointment and then it says the name or you have somebody's address in there or, you know, find an easy way. Here's what we would do. We would put NSA for new seller appointment and then their name or NBA for new buyer appointment. If I had to go back a second time for a seller, it would be SA, just seller appointment. And then again, their name, if we showed them houses, right? Because you're not just going to present to them once and they happen to buy the house that second. BA was that appointment type. Then I can go back in my Google calendar and search NSA. Boom, there's all my appointments. I can go in and search just SA. Boom, there's all my second, my two steps or three steps, whatever I had to do. It's an easy way for me to see how many appointments does it take for me to get to a closing? And then I have it broken out, right? Buyer or seller. How many listings did I actually take? Hopefully you are counting that whether you sold it or not. You know how many listings you're taking. Um, a really good, you could just use like an Excel spreadsheet or a Google sheet and even write down, keep a listing inventory balance sheet. If it doesn't sell, you mark it not sold. If it sells, you mark it sold. Um, Melissa, I know uses one that has things like, you know, how many open houses did they have? When was the last price reduction? Like, you know, you can get as advanced as you want, but an easy way to do it again is just, you know, mark it in a, in a spreadsheet, then your closed listing volume. So how much volume did you close from those listings? And then lastly, your top six sources. So sometimes it's hard to remember, right? You're like, oh, I do everything by referral. And then you forgot that you actually met this person through a networking group that used to be in two years ago that re that gave you, you know, this lead or whatever, or your oil change guy, you know. So you want to be as specific as you can about your listing sources and your buyer sources. Because a lot of us think we need to spend more money, spend more money on sources, when it costs us three to four times more to acquire a new customer than it does to keep the ones that we have, meaning asking them for referrals, you know, getting three transactions off of each listing um, by working these deals and working our database. So knowing your top six sources is really, really important. It's going to prevent you from spending tons and tons of money. All right. Next is branding. So branding to me is a lot of fun to talk about because, um, you know, we have a brand whether we know it or not, right? Um, if you don't have a brand, that's the brand you got. If you've got a brand, that's the brand you have. So branding is a process of connecting good strategy with good creativity. So let's talk about differentiating yourself. And in this document, it'll show that branding is going to show up in your marketing. It's going to show up how you post on social media, how you interact. You know, think about how you feel when you look at a big brand like Apple, for instance. <clears throat> we bought my mom an Apple Watch yesterday. And um, the people that we were talking, the one guy was like, oh, do you have an Apple Watch? I'm like, sure do. And he's like, what one? You know, so now we're talking like versions. And then I go, I have to go back to the checkout whatever, there was a mistake on it, right? So I have to go back to customer service. And that guy was like, ooh, do you have the new titanium one that does like, it did something different. I'm like, oh, I don't even know about it. What the heck? I'm like a huge Apple person. So, right, like 
you feel like you're part of this club. Now, those of you with Android are like, oh, puke, you guys and your apples, right? Um, but it could be anything. Maybe you like shopping at Target. Maybe you like um, Amazon. You love Prime. Like, it's got to be their same day. I'm so jealous of you guys that have same day. We do not. Our Prime right now is like two to three days. Um, but, right, it makes you feel a certain way. You like the values, possibly, that they have around their business or what you think it creates. And so you notice it. You notice the brand. You also have those same things. Maybe you're just not aware of it. So I want you to go through really fast. This is like, don't overthink it. You read it and like the ones that you like, yes, like maybe you want to be like that or you are, you want to circle those five. Those are your top five brand values. So I'm going to go through this list really fast. Just pick five. So let's say it's um, care, dependability, um, knowledge, strength, success. Okay, let's say those are my brand values. Now I know that when I'm putting out, you know, even flyers, social media content, shooting a video, a newsletter, talking to my clients, my presentations should have those kinds of either power words or even the colors that I choose, right? I'm not going to use pastel colors if my words are like strength and dominance and you know like pastel probably doesn't exactly you know that says like I care about you I'm approachable um I don't know right whatever you have to just kind of think of it like where do you see these things so pick your top five brand values because you're going to use this throughout your year in how you express yourself and show others about your business. The second part to branding is the elevator pitch. And it's not exactly coming up with something funky, like instead of saying, oh, I'm a realtor and sell homes. And people are like, that's a terrible pitch. And you're like, okay, I am a proven master and getting people more money and less stress. And, you know, then you kind of like word salad them. No, this is about how you're explaining yourself in, of course, listing presentations, buyer presentations, but also it's under, to me, an elevator pitch is almost you understanding your own value that you bring to the table. And this is especially important right now when we're hearing all about the lawsuits and, you know, how to show people that what we're worth, that we should get paid what we're worth and things like that. So your first part of your elevator pitch is I provide what? What's the primary benefit of your business? It, and it can be as simple as home ownership. It can be I provide results to people looking to move, um, whatever, right? Next is who is it for? Now, people kind of get real twisted up on this one. Like I'm not picking a niche, okay? Because my niche is everybody that wants to buy or sell. Okay, totally fine. So it's people looking to buy or sell a home. If you have a niche, like I work with divorced people looking for their second thing in life, whatever. Like I have a girl that I work with who is really deep into that niche and does amazing. Now, if a married family that wants a horse ranch comes to her, is she going to sell them a house? Yes. Yeah. But she speaks to her expertise in this divorced niche. People still seek her out for her knowledge, her dependability, her results. But she kind of focuses on that. Who? Who is the audience that has this problem? So maybe right now, and your pitch can change, right? So your messaging might be, if you're wanting to move right now and you are so confused, if you should move because of the interest rates, or if you're going to, if you think people are going to call you an idiot for buying right now, because you didn't have to give me a call. I want to talk. I'll let you know, you know, what's really happening in the market that the news doesn't want you to know. Like that doesn't sound scammy or salesy. And it's true. If you guys do any kind of keeping current matters, you're going to hear all those stats. Melissa just posted some stats the other day. So if you don't follow Melissa, well, you obviously follow Melissa on social, but um, you know, like you just have to be the resource for them. Unlike, so what existing solutions are out there and maybe what aren't they covering that you do, right? So again, it just could be like um, things like 
you know, you meet the client where they're at. So, which could mean like, if they're not ready to buy today, you're going to nurture them. It could mean like, you're going to meet them at their house instead of the office or, you know, whatever. It could mean a, a myriad of things. It could be, I have 37 years of experience, you know, um, or it could be, Hey, I'm a newer agent. So I'm not set in my ways and like, I'll actually help you, whatever it is. And then you're offering. So what is your biggest differentiator? When you think through these things, you can explain your own value really well. So that way, when someone says, what do you do? And you say, I'm a realtor. And they're like, mm. you know, falling asleep. And then they're like, hey, how's the market? And you're like, well, now I'm falling asleep because I have to answer that all the time. You have a better way to start a conversation. So that's what this elevator pitch and branding is all about. All right, let's jump into the marketing piece of it. So marketing is really important, right? I always say the best realtors are actually excellent marketers that happen to sell real estate. And so if people like you, they'll listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. And that's from Zig Ziglar. So we can win at the game of marketing without knowing everything about marketing. So you have to know who you best help and what they respond to, right? So that's why we were doing that exercise in marketing. But in order to figure out this, you have to direct your message to some of their pain points. So let's talk about an avatar. So an avatar is that person or people that embody this issue and you're trying to sell homes to them or sell your services to them. So there's three circles, right? what buyers and sellers want, what your competition does exceptionally well, and what you do exceptionally well. Most people kind of hone in on that middle part. And they're like, I want to be everything to what buyers and sellers want. I want to be better than my competition. And I want people to know what I do well. Really what makes us better or different is what we do well and what buyers and sellers are looking for. It doesn't actually matter what the competition does. So when you look at your target market, to kind of figure that out, you can, you can tell by who you're helping. So when I first got into real estate, I helped a ton of first time home buyers, right? Because I was kind of of that age as well when I got started. So it, it, those were the people I talked with and talked to, and that happened to be sort of who I helped. What's their occupation? What's their income? What's their family like? Why do they need your services? That's when all figuring out your target market. Melissa, when you kind of thought, think through who you help now, is it different than when you started? Do you kind of see a target developing? It is. And it, it does. It for sure evolves. So it's like you you start out and you're kind of, you know, I started a lot of new construction and then just had repeat clients. And then now I'm helping their kids. And so it just kind of evolves and your price point goes up the, the more that you do the business as well. So then you can focus on different things because you've got the experience and which kind of helps with the upper price point as well. So it leads to that. Yeah, yeah that's right. I didn't even think about price point. Exactly. Pretty soon your price point changes. When you guys think about um, how do people know you're the best agent for them? So this one I think is important and sometimes we don't think through, but how do people actually know without you being in front of them? It may be that you need to create some different marketing materials. Maybe you need to create a video on your phone that's 30 seconds that talks about one of their pain points. So let's say it's a first time home buyer. Okay. And their pain point is, I don't know if it's the right, maybe it's just, I don't know if it's the right time to buy. Okay. Right now with rates, shoot a quick video that you can then text to anybody or email to anybody who is thinking about real estate or they talk to you at a party and then you can, you know, look at all the holiday things we're going to. You can text them that video afterwards and say, hey, I know we were talking about the real estate market. This video might help you or somebody you know looking to make a move. And they're like, wow, how nice. Instead of, okay, you gave them your business card. And I mean, I don't even, 
I don't even know where business cards are anymore, to be honest. You know, we used to like keep them all. And now, I mean, everything's in my phone. So, but if that person never contacted me again, they're going to get lost in that sea of contacts that I have, right? So you want to stand out. That's the whole point here. Differentiate yourself and stand out. So now that we kind of have quickly gone through our vision, we've gone through our numbers, we've gone through our branding, we've gone through our marketing, now we're going to audit. We're going to audit strategies to see what we've done in the past and how we can sort of gain that traction in the future. So it takes 20 years to build a reputation and five minutes to burn it. And if you think about that, you'll do things differently. And so if you guys know, um, Charlie Munger worked with Warren Buffett and recently passed away. And I was actually reading a book written, one of the books written about Charlie Munger. And um, he actually met Warren Buffett through a friend that said, you should get to know this guy. You guys seem like you have similar type um, outlooks on everything. But how did that guy know that? He knew it because both of them stood for something. They're not for everybody. Warren in his early career was known for searching out unique stocks that over time he felt showed a pattern of improvement. That was kind of new at that time. So if somebody said to him, hey, I want you to day trade, looks like you're making a ton of money. He would say no, right? And, and that's kind of that niche, right? And I think it worked out pretty well for Warren and for Charlie. Um, so it just goes to show when people know what they can count on you for, they will do business with you and a lot more business than normal. So let's look at our social goals for our first piece of the audit. So if you struggle with social media and you're like, I don't know what to post, I don't know when to post, I don't know how to post, then what's happening is you're thinking more about you than how it would affect the person viewing that social post or reel or whatever it might be. And that's okay. We all start there. I promise you before Melissa became a social media star, she struggled with what to spend, what to do on content. Right. And Melissa, I think you should talk about this a little bit because this is really, you really are taking this and running with it and, and getting really great results for people. Yeah. And you know, it, it's a long game, just like anything else, to be honest with you. But it's so amazing right now because I've done the social media consistently in my business now, I'd say for six months, not like forever. But, you know, it, it every event or function I go to, I have somebody that asked me a question about something that I said. So it's like, mm -hmm. and it's free. I mean, it's like what I'm doing is free. It's not costing me any money to do it. But Stacey is exactly right. When you figure out who your avatar is and who you're talking to, um, then every post that you make, you're talking to that person. And even if one person says that's great, like you said, we don't see what um, the benefits yet of what we're reaping. It just it's just a long game. But really having a focus, like she said, come in mind of who you're talking to makes it so much easier. So it's like this is you know exactly who I'm talking to. This is who this is going to help, and this is the question I'm answering. Um, you can get you know some engagement, some followers, and just conversations when you're at different places too, which has been huge and shocking to me. But that's how you know it's it's going to help me with this piece of it yeah so I'm going to ask you some more questions about it because I think what you do is so great so tell us how like how does someone find content to shoot like how do you come up with this content how do you how do you get it shot how do you put it in your calendar because you're busy you sell a lot of homes you have a big team you have training for other agents you're you know you got a lot, you got a new grand bait. Well, he's not new anymore. I know, right? He's, he's one. Yeah. I know. Yeah. But right. Like you've got, it's not like you're sitting around going, Oh my gosh, I got like 10 hours to do nothing today. So how do you find content? How do you shoot it? What do you do? How would someone get started like that? Um, actually chat GPT is helping a lot as well. So it's like, if you start researching um, competitors, and I use that word lightly, you know, people that you want to follow and probably go out of the market and just see what they're doing. Um, even people like 
um, Brenda Burchard, um, Ed Milette, you know, just different speakers and coaches uh, that are different levels and see what they're doing, Mel Robbins, um, and then just kind of emulating them, but I content batch. So it's like, all right, so, you know, we get stuck thinking it has to be on Monday. Monday is not the best day for me because you're working through the weekend and stuff. So Wednesdays or Thursdays, I'm like, all right, okay, here's an easy way, y'all. It's like, look at your phone. What's, what's the question somebody asked you? either from an agent or a buyer and seller, that's the question. That's the content. Don't make it harder than what it is. So just go back through your phone and look at the messages you've had from different people or the emails. And that's a great way. Um, ChatGPT can help break it down if you need bullet points or things like that. But I kind of like, all right, so what should I talk about? How can I batch it? Um, and right now I do have somebody coming in and we actually did it yesterday and I make 30 videos at a time, which is crazy, but talking about content batching. So you can do it at one time, but not to be at that level. It took me a while to do that for him to be able to do that for me, but just make it easy. You can use the green screen, reach out to me. We'll talk about this further. Just a lot of different things. Just get a news article, set up a Google alert for real estate. And guess what comes in? All about the rates yesterday. So that's what people are searching. So capture a picture of it, put it on a green screen on Instagram, hold, you know, it's behind you as you're talking about it. So just don't make it harder, you know, than what it is. But those are some of the things that I started with, you know, to get you going further down the road with social media. Yeah. And so, okay, I'm going to ask another question. And <clears throat> how did you learn how to um, do a green screen? How did you learn how to do the I can't even think what it's called, but when it's like someone else on there and you're like, mm hmm, because they're saying something uh, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, what is that thing? Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah, just, you can Google it, you know, on on Instagram, you know, you scroll over and, and see it has a little hand with a green screen. So you punch it and just playing with it. Honestly, you know, I'm not a big movie watcher or anything at night. So I would sit there and, and watch people that are teaching it so you could do it and just play around with it. So then you do it, delete it before it goes live, you know, kind of thing. But that you can Google it super easy or find people. You can search on Instagram. Did you know that? So you can search on Instagram, like how to do a green screen and, and things like that will pop up. So it's super easy, you know, to figure out how to do it. Nice. I love that. So it is, it's kind of like getting a new phone. You get your new phone and you're like, like, I remember when Apple took away the home button? I was like, what? How do we, <laughs> right? So like, you, but you get used to it because you're willing to put in the time and mm -hmm. fail and you don't care, right? Where social sometimes feels like we're failing in front of anyone, everyone, but people only see 20% of what you post. Like even like I follow Melissa and I watch for her stuff and I still don't see all of it. So never feel like you're over posting. You could post the same Right. batch of 30 videos every month and not the same people will see it. Mm -hmm. Plus it takes what seven times for someone to actually comprehend what you're telling them, right? All of us, like you have to hear something seven times in order for it to kind of sink in. So yeah, it's, it's not easy, but it can be very simple to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Any other social media tips? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, you know, and you can reach out to me, actually. we I challenged my um, team to have a social media. And honestly, the struggle is, what am I going to say? So it's like we had something every day to talk about. So it's like a 30-day challenge. You know, this is what I'm going to talk about. And I think that's half the struggle is that you're like, what in the world am I going to do? Which I totally get. But if you when you start opening your mind to the things that you can talk about, and honestly, like Stacy said, reposting. It's like we think, oh, this person saw it. How can I do it again? No, they didn't. <laughs> Share it on yeah. your story. Repurpose it. You know, all the different things that you can do. But yeah, just kind of having a plan. Even if you set out like in January, this is what I'm going to talk about. People have asked me that even if it's the same thing every other day it doesn't matter just set up a plan to do it and do it and and you'll just progress as you keep going I love it and then one last question do you make different content for Facebook and Instagram and TikTok or do you make your content and then post on multiple places I just do one I don't get down that rabbit hole either so it's just like it is what it is I know technically you probably should but I don't and, and repurpose.io will take it and repurpose it for you. So put it on TikTok, 
and you set up the system in repurpose.io and then it sends it to Instagram and sends it to Facebook and LinkedIn. So I'm just putting it all mm. out there right now. But that one um, software will do all of it for you. So you're not redoing it. So I'm just looking at easy ways to repurpose what I've already done. I love it. Okay, everybody, if you want, this is probably for me too. If you want Melissa to do a call on exactly what she talked about, put a one in the chat because I think that would be absolutely amazing. And I'm dropping my own one. Okay, great. Oh, it's a good, yes, yes, it's a yes. <laughs> All right, yep, see, look at this, blowing up. The most, it's the most action in the business plan we got today. Everyone's like, yes, give us that. All right, great. Okay, the second part of the audit is skills. So look, NFL players, they don't wait until their big game on Thursday, Sunday, Monday, whatever all the days are they're playing now, or the Super Bowl to practice their plays and communication, right? That's what practice is for. Everybody knows what to do. However, in real estate, and I am the same way, is I tend to practice on the people that I'm trying to present to, right, or give it to. So you got to know, like right now is a really good time when we have this downtime and sometimes we get kind of low feeling, right? Like, oh my gosh, I'm not busy. It's the end of the year. NARS, all my dues are due, all those things, right? It's a good time to assess what do I need to train for? What services do I need to add? What skills do I need to add? What objection handlers do I need? Like I get it all the time. Um, you know, for me, this just came up actually. Um, I was on a plane with my brother and my brother is a very different uh, personality type, super successful, younger than me, uh, which bugs me. But anyway, he was asking me about how this pay structure works, okay? The specific pay structure. And he was like really diving into it and asking detailed engineer questions. And I couldn't answer it. And it like bugged me so bad because I thought, you know what? I need to know how to explain this in a really great way. So something like that, right? Like the second you're trying to handle it and you know it's come up before, like that's something to practice, right? Or just dive a little bit deeper into so you can understand it better. Um, you know, when people say, how, how do you make me more money? Every realtor says that, like, what is it? Maybe you offer staging and consultations and you use professional pictures and that on average makes people three to 5% more, you know? So like, look at statistics online, NAR produces tons of those types of statistics. And so anyway, those might be things that you need to add to your repertoire. Maybe it's conversations, maybe um, you're short, maybe you're too long and you're winded in your conversations, right? It could be lots of different things, but it's a good way to audit what needs to happen. All right, we are almost to the finish line and we're gonna talk about our goals. So you can do whatever you set your mind to. If you just roll up your sleeves, get in there and do it. Everything is figure outable. Marie Forleo is a good person to watch on social one of my favorites. Um, and, you know, she, her mom told her this when she was little, everything is figure outable. And so she's kind of used it in her life. And if you kind of keep that sort of in the back of your mind, you're like, yeah, you're right. Like I can figure it out. I can do it. So when we're talking about our business, we looked at our goals. We looked at what our dream job would be in real estate. We looked at the money we want to make. We looked at what systems do we need, right? Because we did it, we did the um, one through five and we couldn't pick three. And so now it is really much more simple to put together this plan because we have our future date. So you're going to fill one of these out for a three year, a one year and a 90 day. If you have trouble doing the three year and you can, you, you can only think about 12 months ahead, it's okay. Just do a one year. If you're really good at three year, but you have trouble bringing it down to a one year, then just go three year to 90 days. And you'll pretty much, probably your first go at a 90 day plan is actually probably a year plan because you put too much in there. But um, it's a good way just to kind of start. So let's just pick the year for an example, because we looked at our 20 to $200, right? Like we've literally in the pages before 
have this plan, we're going to put it on a one pager. So the future date, if we choose one year, is obviously the end of next year. How much volume do we need to close? So this is the number of homes you need to sell divided, or excuse me, times the average sales price. So I put in gray the little calculation there, and it's in your booklet. Um, your GCI gross commission income closed, right? Your gross margin and then your net profit. So all those calculations are in there. So you'll have it very easily. Now you want to put in there, what's your role over the next year? Are you the main listing agent and buyer agent? Great. What does that require? It requires you to connect with clients every single day. It requires you to, you know, do some of the marketing things we talked about. It requires you to have scripts and objection handlers ready to go. What's your role? Admin. Admin could also be vendor. So like Melissa mentioned, right? My photographer does this. My sign guy does this. Like it could be that as well. Like who are we going to start to give some things to or have conversations with? What systems do we need? Melissa talked about a social media system. Like, what is that? Sources of business. We did that already. What were our top six listing sources? What were our top six buyer sources? And then additional people needed. So when you're putting in those five strategies, because remember I said every business plan has five strategies. Those are your five strategies. But we kind of did it in a way where you answered it and self-discovered for yourself instead of me and Melissa just giving you these examples that you have to choose for success. This is your plan and that's why it makes it unique and it makes it something that you can hold on to. So your job now is to finish up the booklet, right? Take some time on some of the areas we flew through, take some time to really create this plan now and ideally, you'd have a three-year, a one-year, and a 90-day. But if nothing else, you need a 90-day plan. You have to have 90. If you don't do a year and you don't do three, it's okay. The world's not going to crash around you. But you have to have a 90-day plan. Otherwise, you're driving somewhere without a map. You know where you want to go, but you don't know, like, the fastest way to get there. And you're going to hit all those traffic jams. It's going to take you too long, and you may even miss your destination. So that's what we're looking to accomplish. So I hope, and Melissa, I know you as well, and we'll open it up if you have questions. I'm happy, we're happy to answer them, but the road to success is always under construction. And so while this is a planning, it's a verb planning session, it's something that you want to continue to look back on, continue to do, and really work through because our plans are never static. There's always changes. There's always, you know, situations we have to pivot. And so I hope this plan though helps kind of get you on that right track. Thank you so much. That was great. Yes. Anything else you wanted to add, Melissa, like with planning or things you've done or... No, I don't think so. This December just seems to be the time to plan. I do plan out for like the whole year, you know, client events, um, parties that we're going to have, just different things like that. Because then what has happened to me as my business grew is like you get super busy and then guess what? That falls to the cracks. I mean, I even did like postcards. I'm sending postcards these days. So we had a deadline on when that's supposed to be done. So kind of when you go backwards in your business too, which is just the time, this is what I want to do implement it you know we used to google calendars like here's the um, mailings and when so this had to be due the first you know what are we going to do so it can be out like the 15th so just those things that seem super simple but just as your business grows keeps it in place for you to continue to grow your business as opposed to going oh I didn't do anything this year because I got super busy so some of those things you know to look at as well um, yeah. But we're here for you. If you want to set up a time to talk um, with me further about anything, I'm happy to coach you through this, what Stacy's done. Um, but we're happy to help in any way. Before we go, we may have a quick question um, that we can't answer for you while we're on. And like I said, I'll send you a recording of it with the information too, so you can go back and review um, with the booklet again, so we can kind of get you started in the right direction. All right. Yeah, I'll post the booklet just quick one more time, just in case you didn't grab it. 